Ayan, so purchase commitment. So sometimes companies uh, often contract with suppliers to purchase a specified amount, a specified quantity of materials during a future period of time at agreed unit cost. Take note. So uh, take note of keywords. So this is uh, purchase commitments are contract. So there should be a buyer and seller. Uh, for this particular topic, our point of view is that we are the buyer. So, the contract is about buying or purchase transactions, about specified quantity of materials uh, during a future period of time. Take note at agreed unit price. So, ang nangyayari dyan, uh, for example, I am the company, manufacturing company. I want to secure a uh, supply of my raw material. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, enter into a what we call executory contracts. Ayun nakalagay na. So, executory contracts. So, meaning, uh, mangyayari pa to sa future and there should be a execution or performance. So, yung performance, mangyayari siya sa future. Uh, kailangan ko ng raw material. So, magalap ako ng supplier na willing to sell a specified amount of materials at agreed unit cost or price. Kasi purchase commitments is uh, very useful kung masyadong nagpa-fluctuate yung price ng raw materials mo. So, kung pabago-bago yung raw materials mo, edi hanap ka na ng supplier na willing sa'yo magbenta at specified unit cost. So, take note also that purchase commitments can be cancelable or non-cancelable. So, actually, hindi ginamit sa book yung word na cancelable. May can uh, cancelable siya or subject to revision. So, yun yung ginagamit na term dun sa book natin. So, kapag uh, cancelable or subject to revision, so, wala masyadong problema dyan. So, sabi nga dun sa third bullet point, kapag subject to revision or cancellation, before the end of the period. Ayan. So, wala masyadong problema dyan. So, may problema yung company if the purchase commitments is a non-cancellable type or not subject to revision. So, ibig sabihin, we are obliged to follow the contract whatever the price will be in the future. So, yun. So, magbago man, tumaas, kailangan magbayad tayo at specified future of time. At specified future cost na napag-usapan or as stated dun sa purchase commitments contract natin. So, actually, ang concern natin dyan, itong non-cancellable purchase commitments. So, if the purchase commitments is subject to revision or cancellation, uh, ang kailangan lang natin is uh, disclosure dun sa notes to the financial statement. So, a disclosure in the notes to financial statement is required for a purchase contract subject to revision or cancellation if a future loss is possible the amount of the committed commitment can be reasonably estimated and the amount is material so disclosure requirements lang siya so no entry is required for purchase contract subject to revision and cancellation so when purchase contracts are non cancellable so dito tayo may problem and when loss is probable and material and can be reasonably estimated, the loss and related liability should be recorded in the accounts. So, in case the purchase commitments is a non-cancellable time, so that's the time we need to make some adjustment every time na magbabago yung price. And these journal entries or these uh, changes uh, will be journalized. Siyempre, pagdating natin ng 12.31, every end ng calendar, calendar or fiscal year kasi we need to make some adjusting entries also. And at the time na i-execute na yung contract. Ibig sabihin nung i-execute na yung contract, magkakaroon na ng exchange between the buyer and the seller. So, ibig sabihin, kung hindi pa naman nagkakaroon exchange pero reporting date mo na, you need to make a journal entries or to recognize the change in price. Yun. And magkakaroon tayo ulit ng recognition and change in price every time na i-execute na yung contract. Ayan. So, for an example, so, I have, uh, look at, uh, I have 
actually two problems for uh, purchase commitments. So, basahin ko na yung problem. So, ABC Company has been uh, having difficulty obtaining key raw materials for its manufacturing process. The company therefore signed a long-term non-cancellable purchase commitment with its largest supplier of this raw material on November 30, 2019. So, pinirmahan yung contract or nagkaroon ng contract, executory contract or purchase commitment contracts noong November 30, 2019 at an agreed price of 400000 So, at December 31, 2019, the raw material had declined in price to 375,000. So, ang question lang dyan, what entry would you make on December 31, 2019 to recognize these facts? So, take note. So, as of, so, nung Genua November 30, uh, 2019, so, this is the date of uh, executory contract. So, dito, uh, no entry dito. Bakit no entry? Kasi, Wala pa namang exchange uh, transaction during that day. So, since wala pang transaction dyan, kasi nga, executory contract lang yung entered uh, into between the parties. So, therefore, no entry tayo dyan. Pero pagating natin ng uh, December 31, 2019, nagbago yung price. So, Nagbago yung price no inventory. We are trying to purchase in some future period of time. So, as of 12-31-2019, ang price ng inventory is 375000 So, ang contract natin, so, yung price ng 11-30-2019, meaning yung date na nagkaroon ng contract, executory contract or purchase contract between the buyer and the seller, that is 400000 so, remember, yung purchases natin magiging part ng inventory. So, ang estimated amount ng inventory is 400,000 if nangyari yung purchase ng 11.30. Kaya, napagating mo ng 12.31, bumaba. So, naging 375,000. Therefore, there is a decrease in the value of inventory, which is 25,000. Of course, this is not yet inventory kasi nga, hindi pa siya binibili. So, possible or probable loss lang yung uh, 25,000. So, since nag-decline yung value ng assets natin in the future, this will be recognized as a loss on purchase commitments. So, yung journal entry will be, uh, ito yung 12-31-2019. So, our journal entry is debit to loss on purchase commitments. This is 25,000. Tapos credit tayo lang estimated liability on purchase commitment amounting to 25,000. So take note, so kapag bumaba yung value ng purchase commitments, recognize tayo ng loss. Kasi ang partner ng purchase mo, asset. Part kasi ng inventory yung purchases in the future. Ngayon, assuming hindi na nagbago yung price, napakaw na siya dun sa 375,000. So, therefore, pagdating natin ng 2020, take note, exa, ano lang to example lang, wala sa problem. Ang magiging journal entry ko dyan is debit ako ng purchases. This is 375,000. Assuming 375,000 pa rin yung uh, value. So, credit ako ng accounts payable. Kasi take note, ang, per, ang purchase commitment is future purchases at agreed price. E ang ag agreed price natin is 400000 So therefore, whatever happens to the market price, ang babayaran natin sa supplier is 400000 So yung difference na 25000 syempre, itong estimated liability on purchase commitment. commitment. Kasi liability yan eh. Pinepresent po yung estimated liability on purchase commitment as part ng uh, current liabilities. While yung loss on purchase commitment naman, part siya ng uh, administrative expenses or operating expenses. So, ibig sabihin, pareho silang kasama sa computation mo ng uh, net income or net profit sa statement of comprehensive income. Pero doon sila sa taas. Sa part sila ng operating income. 
So, debit ako dito ng estimated liability on purchase commitment for 25,000. Kung may tanong po dun sa example number 1, please let me know. Thank you. Yan, example number 2 tayo. So, example number 2, sabi niya, at December 31, 2019, ABC Company has outstanding non-cancellable ulit. So, remember, pag non-cancellable, it requires journal entries every reporting period, meaning end ng calendar year or end ng fiscal year, and also at that time na, i-execute na yung purchase commitments. So, non-cancellable purchase commitments for 40,000 gallons at 3 pesos per gallons. So, that will be 40,000 40,000 gallons i-multiply ko ng 3 per gallon. So, lalabas ang purchase commitments natin is for 120,000. So, remember, this is the value of your accounts payable yan. To be used on, in its manufacturing process and to be delivered on January 31, 2020. So, ibig sabihin, i-execute ko yung contract pagating ng January 31, 2020. Pero as of December 31, uh, wala pang purchase transactions na nangyayari. So, instructions, see. Next slide. So, ito yung first assumption natin. Sabi niya, give the journal entry assuming the market price on December 31, 2019 is 3.3 and the market price in January or on January 31, 2020 was 2.70 per gallon. So, check lang natin. So, una, 12.31, 2019. So, kung 40,000. So, i-multiply ko na 3.30. 40,000 times 3.30. So, magiging 132,000. Eh, ang purchase commitments natin is 40,000 times 3 lang. So, this is 120,000. Remember, ang agreed price mo, yan yung nasa accounts payable. So, yung value ng purchase commitments o itong price na to will be reflected dun sa purchases natin or dun sa inventory account. So, if you, not, if you notice, so, parang tumaas as of December 31, 120 lang dapat yung value ng inventory at accounts payable at the time na nag-enter yung parties into a purchase commitments. Kaya lang naging 132. So, may increase na 12,000. Siyempre, according to uh, highest number 1, we are uh, in the conceptual framework. So, pag nagpe-prepare tayo ng financial statements, we are uh, using the principle of prudence or conservatism. So, hindi tayo nagre-recognize ng possible increase dun sa asset. Kasi, 120 yung liability mo, nakapako dyan. So, yung price na to will be reflected dun sa inventory mo. Ito maas. So, therefore, di natin siya i-recognize. Kaya, pagdating mo ng 12.31, 2019, no entry ka dito. Kasi, instead na bumaba, tumaas pa yung value ng inventory o purchases natin dun sa future. So, ano yung entry na? 12.31, 2019. Now, pagdating mo ng, brain ko lang, Ayan. So, pagdating ko ng January 1, January 1, 31, sorry, 2020, nagbago yung price. So, from 2, from 3, kasi ang recorded na estimated liability, hindi naman natin na-recognize yung increase na 0.3. So, 3 pa rin yung uh, value ng purchase commitments natin. So, ayun. So, to, bumaba yung magiging value na inventory. So, 1. So, 40,000 gallons. I-multiply ko ng 2.7. So, that will give me around 108,000. So, yung value ng estimated uh, or purchase commitments natin. So, take note, this is the value of our inventory. Nung time na in-execute yung contract, that's 40,000 times 3. So, that will give us 120,000. So, nagkaroon ng decrease doon sa value ng inventory na 12,000. So, ibig sabihin, at the time na execute yung contract, 
hindi natin dapat i-record yung inventory or purchases at 120,000 kasi nagbago yung value niya, bumaba as of January 1, 31, 2020. Naging 108 na lang. So, yung purchases natin, i-record at 108. Di pwedeng 120. Pero yung account payable mo, accounts payable mo, 120 pa din. Kasi nga, sa purchase commitments, ang agreement nila, specified yung purchase price which is 120 and uncancelable to so hindi na magbabago yung three per unit na price natin so ang magiging journal entry ng January 31, 2020 is debit to debit to purchases syempre at market price which is 2.7 kaya 108,000 yan magkikredit ako ng accounts payable yung agreed price this is 40,000 gallons uh, i-multiply ko ng 3 so this is 120,000 yung difference nila is debit ako ng loss on purchase commitments which is 12,000 which is the decreasing price uh, from uh, 3 to 2.7 yan so next requirement Okay class, uh, number two requirement, give the entry assuming the market price on December 31, 2019 is 2.7 and the market price in January 31, 2020 is 2.5. So, bago natin malaman uh, kung meron tayong loss na i-recognize, -re compare muna natin yung price. So, yung price ng inventory o ng uh, Tama, raw materials nung 12.31, uh, 2019, that will, that, uh, that will be 40,000. Imumultiply ko na ang market price ng December 31, which is 2.7. So, that will give me about 108,000. Pagkatapos, i-compare ko yan dun sa initial value na purchase commitments natin, which is uh, 40,000 times 3. So, this is 120,000. So, take note. So, yung inventory natin naka-base dun sa market price. So, kung hindi nagbago sana yung price, kundi naging 3, ang magiging debit sana natin sa purchases, 120. Pero dahil bumaba yung price, ang i-debit natin sa purchases, so, in effect, magiging part ng assets natin, 108. So, i-recognize -re natin yung difference. O, i-recognize -re natin yung decrease dun sa value ng asset, value ng inventory amounting to 12,000. So, ang magiging journal entry natin dyan ng 1231 2019 is debit to loss on purchase commitments for 12,000 credit tayo ng estimated liability on purchase commitments for uh, 12,000 just to recognize yung possible loss dun sa value ng inventory natin kapag in-execute na yung purchase contracts. So, yung loss on purchase commitments will be recognized as part of your operating expenses, uh, most probably as part of administrative expense, while your estimated liabilities on purchase commitments will be uh, presented on your statement of financial position as part of your current liabilities. Ngayon, pagdating natin ng January 1, ah, sorry, January 31, 2020, kasi ito na yung uh, date of purchases. So, tignan ulit natin kung magkakaroon pa tayo ng decrease. Nagkaroon pa ng decrease eh. From 2.7, mas bumababa pa. From 2.5. So, magiging magkano na yung value ng inventory ko dapat. So, that will be 40,000 gallons, multiply ko ng 2.5 so that is 100,000 i-compare ko yan sa recorded price or yung price ng reporting period o nung last tayong nag-recognize ng increase or decrease dun sa price ng inventory which is December 31, 2019 so that is 40,000 times 2.7 o itong 108 so minus ako dito na 108,000. So, ibig sabihin, nag-decrease pa lalo yung price o yung magiging value ng inventory natin ng additional 8,000. So, itong 8,000 na to, additional loss yan. So, ang magiging 
journal entry natin ng December, January 1, uh, January 31, 2020. So, una, syempre, debit ako ng purchases at market price. Ang market price natin is 2.5. So, that is 100,000. Siyempre, tatanggalin na natin sa estimated liability. So, debit ako ng estimated liability on purchase commitments for 12,000. Tapos, recognize ko yung additional loss. So, debit ako ng loss on purchase commitments for 8,000. And lastly, credit ako ng accounts payable. Siyempre, yung agreed price which is 40,000 times 3. Sa so, itong 120 yun. So, credit ako ng 120,000. So, as you notice, di nagbabago yung 120 kasi nga, yan yung agreed price dun sa purchase commitments. So, since bumababa further yung value na o market value ng raw materials per unit, recognize tayo ng additional loss. Yun nga yung 8,000. Last requirement. So, next slide. Okay, so last requirement, give the entry assuming the market price on December 31, 2019 is 2.5. So from 3, naging 2.5. And the market price in January 31 was 3.2 gallons. Yun nga lang, pagdating mo ng January 31, mas tumaas pa yung price. So from 3, naging 3.2 siya. So sa 12.31, since bumaba, kumpitin natin ulit. So, 40,000 gallons yung bibilin. Mumultiply ko ng 2.5. So, this is uh, 100,000. Tapos, ang uh, agreement natin is to purchase the inventory at 120,000. O, yan yung 40,000 times 3. Ayos, sumulat. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, recognize tayo ng loss amounting to 20,000 na 1231. So, ang magiging journal entry ko dyan, debit ako ng loss on purchase commitments for 20,000. Credit ako ng estimated uh, liability on purchase commitments for 20,000. Ngayon, pagdating ng January 1, January 31, sorry, 2020, compare ulit natin yung price. So, 40,000 times 3.2, that is 128,000. Compare natin yung price ng December 31, that's 40,000 times 2.5. This is uh, 100, uh, sorry, 100,000. So, parang meron tayong 28,000 na increase sa price. Uh, Kung wala tayong loss na ni-recognize, di natin i-recognize yung increase from uh, 100 to 128. Kaya meron tayong ni-recognize na loss na 20,000. Eh. So, that is the case. Allowed naman tayo to recognize a recovery from uh, purchase commitments but up to yung recorded loss lang, which is 20,000. So, ibig sabihin, hindi natin pwede i-recognize as recovery yung buong 28,000. Ang pwede lang i-recognize yung 20,000. If we're going to follow that rule, sa madaling salita, ang purchases natin, kasi sabi ko dun sa previous slide, yung purchases will be recorded at market value. Pero, dahil nga hindi tayo allowed to recognize a recovery more than yung nirecognize nating loss, so therefore, ang rule, yung purchase na amount na i-debit natin for purchases should not be more than yung original agreed price, which is 3 per unit. So, Kasi pag finala natin yung rule na at market value, record natin yung purchases ng 128. Eh di pwede yun. Kasi yung allowed sa ating i-recognize na recoveries is up to recorded loss lang, which is 20,000. So dapat ang purchases mo hanggang 120 lang din, which is 40,000 times 3. Or the original uh, price as agreed upon by the parties. So ang magiging journal entry natin dyan, take note, debit ako ng purchases. Hindi pwede gamitin yung 128 kasi hindi allowed i-recognize yung 28,000 na recoveries. So, doon lang tayo sa 120. So, debit ako ng uh, purchases. This is 120,000 
tanggalin ko yung estimated liability kasi na execute AES execute na yung contract so debit ako ng estimated liability on purchase commitments for 20,000 credit ako ng accounts payable so remember fix yan at 120,000 or 40,000 gallons times the original purchase price of 3 and lastly i-recover ko yung loss ito yon so credit ako ng recoveries on Uh, purchase commitments which is for 20,000. Kasi nga, di allowed uh, i-recognize yung sobra dun sa ni-recognize mong loss. So, yung recoveries and purchase commitments will be presented as part of your other income. Other income siya. So, I think that's the end of our discussion for purchase commitments. So, I will send uh, you uh, additional problems so that you can practice on your own and I'm using the textbook uh, our textbook uh, Intermediate Accounting Volume 2 by Nenita S. Robles and our own Dean Patricia M. Empleo and our reference book is the Intermediate Accounting IFRS Edition by Kiso, Wigand, and Warfield. If you have any questions just let me know. Thank you.